Hi, I'm Eddie of Eddie's Reef Aquaria. Today's video I'm going to dedicate it to the Montipora Capricornus. It's a Montipora plating. I've had others, but they didn't do too well. But this one, man, is a winner. It's doing great. I've already seen growth patterns, and I've only had it, what, for two weeks. So I'm going to talk about uh, people that know me and that follow me uh, know the routine. I do a little research on the specific coral and then I dive into, into it. You know, I talk about different uh, characteristics and things that you should know about it. So let's take a deep dive in. Check it out. Hold on. Okay, so here we are focused in front of the coral. I try to get a closer shot, but actually I'm shooting it at an angle because of the positioning of the acro that I... Well, actually, it's another Monty that's on front. So, uh, well, let's uh, get into it. Well, first of all, it's a SPS coral. In other words, small polyp stony coral. Now, this coral comes from the family of, uh, which is uh, named Acroporite. They are fast growing corals. Matter of fact, uh, right now, when you look at it, uh, let me get close to it and see if you guys can see it. Um, okay, you see that, uh, that, that little lip there? Okay, that wasn't there. It actually has grown within two weeks. So it is definitely a fast-growing coral, which I've known previously, but I'm actually witnessing it. Now, of course, uh, there's two types of uh, Montipora capricornis. Now, there's one that's plating, which is this one, and then there's another one which are actually encrusting, which I have one uh, on the upper middle part of the tank. Now the characteristics of this coral is that they're now to be, they're known to be found in red, orange, like this one, or purple, with different polyp colors. Now this one, uh, they come, the polyps, I've seen them in white and yellow. This one, I don't know if you can appreciate it, but it's actually yellow. They're little yellow polyps. Now the uh, lights, the radion, is starting to ramp down. So I still have some white left, which I have it for a period of three hours. But then it's full-blown uh, royal blues and all the other blue spectrums. At that time, I can really see it. But right now, when I'm filming this, you can barely, barely see the yellow polyps. Now, uh, plating Montipora capricornis does not follow the rules of either encrusting or stick corals. Unlike encrusting corals, they will happily grow out over the edge of a rock face and do not follow the surface that their base is attached to. So, what I'm saying here is that they actually plate out. And usually, taking that into consideration, you also have to consider where you're going to place them. Because as it plates out, that little Monty, uh, that, I, that little frag that I've had right next to it on the right, I've had it for a long time. It really hasn't grown too much. Uh, it most probably will plate in and outwards. In other words, towards the left and towards the right. And possibly... A little forward and that's where you have the effect that it do create it does create a little shade so you have to take that into consideration when it comes to the other corals below it now uh, when it comes to lighting as with most other SPS corals Montipora Capricornis care requires medium to high levels of light but while not requiring as much light lighting as they say most Acroporas they still need more than basically every LPS or soft coral. Now, when it comes to flow, um, this coral should be kept in uh, high flow. This coral is very well known to collect uh, detritus or debris that fall on top of the coral. Now, if there is not enough flow, what will happen is that this can subsequently rot or cause damage to the flesh of the plating part of the Montipora. Now, also in addition, higher flow brings more nutrients to this coral for it to, con uh, to consume and continue to grow. Now, when it comes to placement, upper third quadrant in general is what's considered, but under right conditions can be placed in middle or lower part of the tank as long as the flow 
is high enough. And to be honest with you, I have seen that if you look other videos, uh, especially uh, from, uh, let's say, from Germany and either um, local uh, United States reefs, you will see that not necessarily uh, do you have to keep him all the way up on the upper third quadrant, but I've seen him in the middle and even lower. But you have to have the proper flow and the proper lighting to uh, achieve that. Now, when it comes to coral behavior, uh, they're known to be peaceful, but as they grow out, as I said before, they tend to shade around the lower part of the coral. Now, the level of difficulty, I found it by research, I found it to be between easy and moderate. And then the water chemistry, uh, I'd say within normal limits. Now, people that follow me know what I mean by that. I mean normal uh, parameters on uh, water temperature, salinity, uh, DKH, calcium, mag, and so on. But you should have stability all around when it comes to the water chemistry. But really, really, you should um, be careful with the DKH. DKH should be as much stable as you can keep it. And I would say within a range between 7 to maybe 8 or 9 DKH. Now, when it comes to feeding, uh, being a photosynthetic uh, coral, they really rely on light. You really, I mean, I really wouldn't go out of my way to actually feed the actual coral. But when it comes to this tank, Monday I, I feed uh, Phytophys, on Wednesday I feed um, Reefroids, and then on Friday I feed uh, Oyster Feast. So that's more than enough, but as I said, I really don't go out of my way to feed it because it does depend on photosynthesis, in other words, of, of the light spectrum that you bombard it with. And then when it comes to NO3 and PO4, in other words, nitrates and phosphates, nitrates, I would say that you should keep it within 1 to 10 parts per million. And phosphates, I'd say between 0 0.01. Now, the rule of thumb is that when you have a mixed reef, you, you can go as high as 0 0.10. Uh, that's what they're suggesting when it comes to a, a mixed reef. Now, there's something that I came across doing this research that I wasn't aware of, but there is a balance between nitrates and phosphates. So what they're saying is that whatever level you have of nitrates, you divide it by 100, and that should actually be your phosphates. Now, again, What's been told in this hobby, and it's very true, do not chase numbers. And I really mean that strongly, don't chase numbers. So, like, let's say if, if you have a nitrate of, uh, let's say, 1, and you divide it by 100, your phosphate should be 0 0.01, but not necessarily. Uh, right now, in this tank, I'm checking my parameters weekly, usually Saturday or Sunday. And I mean, before I do an actual water change, which I'm doing weekly water changes. But I will admit, uh, last week, well, actually last uh, Sunday, I had an NO3, in other words, nitrates, of 2. And I had a PO4 phosphate of 0 0.08. And the tank is doing great. It's doing phenomenal. So... You really, it's just something that I came up with, uh, that I came up when I was doing the research that you should get your nitrate level, parts per million, and divide it by 100. And that is what your phosphates should be. But that's just something that I ran across and I thought I'd throw it out there to all of you. But you don't have to go specifically with that uh, targeted values. Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the video, found it interesting and fun. If you did, hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and hit that little notification bell. And like I say at the end of all of my videos, happy reefing, thanks for watching, and until next time, bye-bye.